against Canada in the gold medal game at 11.30 local time. And then the dominant netball side will try and complete a wonderful games here on the Gold Coast at 1pm, the opening centre pass for the Diamonds taking on England. So that's just a, a smattering of what we've got on offer for you on this final day of coverage from the Gold Coast. But to matters at hand, it is a glorious Sunday morning on the Gold Coast. The sun just making a real presence felt now, rising above the wonderful beaches here. And there are people out around the place, as you'd expect, with the marathons here. Uh, the, the events on the streets have been supported fantastically, be it the walks this time last Sunday, be it the road races in the cycling over the last couple of days. And they're cheering for, predominantly at the moment, a dominant performance from Kurt Fernley. We are about... Uh, Halfway, just beyond halfway in the men's T54 marathon. And Fernley from the start has essentially been pushing out by himself. There is a field of nine competitors in the men's T54 marathon. And Fernley went out by himself at the front and through 10 kilometres had a lead of 17 seconds. There is a chase group of three behind him, two Englishmen and a Canadian in that group, John Smith and Simon Lawson of England along with Tristan Smythe of Canada, the three men who are predominantly trying to chase down Fernley. But after a career where he's had to essentially fight his way through a pack and try and surge at the end of so many of his marathons, it's a lonely push out in front for Fernley in a sense. Although I'd suggest you'll probably say at the end of it all that's probably been the most, uh, the most company he's had throughout a marathon in his career because there are people everywhere he goes. He is pushing out in front and as we went through the last checkpoint, which was at 20 kilometres, Fernley had a lead of 69 seconds. So uh, Lawson, Smith, both of England, Smythe of Canada, those three that are the closest. And then the rest of the field, Alexandre Dupont, the man from Canada who foiled Fernley's last push for gold on the track in the T54. The Canadian is in fifth position, two and a half minutes from the lead. The second of the Australians involved in the race is Jake Lappin. He is four minutes back from the lead. And then the rest of the field filled out by Callum Hall of England and KB Boccio of Ghana and Felix Achimpong also of Ghana. And those men are well back. The Ghanaians almost a dozen minutes behind Fernley. But uh, the, the shimmering sunshine coming over the, uh, the beaches and the skyline here cuts a beautiful picture. And there are Australians at every point of the course. Oh, a dog nearly tried to jump out and get Kurt. Watch out. <laughs> Just as well there was a man holding that. <laughs> He's probably used to having a walk at this time of day. And uh, wreck locals with their beaches and surfboards are crossing the street when they can because this course does go up and down the coast. <laughs> it is a regular scene of what goes on usually on a Sunday morning here with those walking their dogs or trying to catch an early morning wave. But uh, this ain't no regular Sunday. This is the last Sunday of the Commonwealth Games here. And uh, generally, those who want to go and surf have, have stopped to just see these magnificent wheelchair athletes pushed by Fernley with a big lead as we're almost at the halfway. In fact, we've just got the halfway split information come through and that lead of Fernley, which was 69 seconds or so at the 20k mark, is essentially the same point. A minute and 10 seconds to that chase pack of the two Englishmen, Simon Lawson and John Smith and the Canadian Tristan Smythe. Concurrently with this men's T54 marathon is also the women's race. There are nine competitors involved there with two Australians, Madison D. Rosario and Eliza O'Connell involved in the race. And the good news is that um, D. Rosario, the champion from the 1500 metres on the track, also the winner of the Day 10K in and around the rocks in Sydney Harbour in January this year. She is in a lead group of four. So both of the Australians, in fact, are in that lead group uh, as we get towards the 20-kilometre mark. The last bit we had for the women's TK uh, was indeed just coming up now through 20Ks. At 15Ks, it was all Connell D. Rosario, the Scott Samantha Kinghorn, and the Englishwoman Jade Jones. And that group of four is still indeed the lead group through 20K. So both the men and women pushed off at the same time at 10 minutes past six local time here on the Gulf coast and that women's race is tracking uh, just slightly behind the lead group in the men's race but 
Old Connell and Di Rosario in the lead group of four, which is fantastic news for Australia. Jade Jones of England, she is looking to complete a very unique double here. She picked up gold in the triathlon in the paratribe around the Southport uh, water and, uh, and roads of, of that part of the Gold Coast when the, the race was contested, contested a little over a week or so ago. Uh, Diane Roy, the veteran Canadian, is the closest to that chase pack of four. She's a minute and 22 seconds back racing with Nicole Emerson. Uh, Old Connell at 36 years of age and Dee Rosario at 24 years of age sharing that lead group uh, in the quartet there with Jones of England, the triathlon. Emily team, Smith. And also the... Uh, the Scots, uh, the Scots woman in Samantha Kinghorn. So we'll keep you well and truly up to date with progression in this T54 marathon. Just to, to let you know the start times for the other two marathons, the women's marathon is due to get underway in about 10 minutes from now. So expecting that we'll be able to give you early progress in the field of 17. There are three Australians, Virginia Maloney, Jessica Tringove and Lisa Waitman. Tringove, perhaps the runner with the most expectation for the host nation, having finished top 10 in the most recent world championships in London and a bronze medalist in Glasgow in the Commonwealth Games four years ago. And then there are just two men running for Australia in the men's marathon, which is due to get underway in an hour and five minutes from now. Liam Adams and the defending champion Michael Shelley who is a Gold Coaster hasn't regularly run the Gold Coast Marathon though interestingly enough which is contested on a very similar course to the one that we are on today but uh, Adams and Shelley our two men the men's marathon 8.15 local time and the women's marathon to get underway in uh, about 20 minutes from now just to give you an idea of the course that they're plotting this morning on this glorious Sunday here so they start at the uh, the same point, or around the transition point where we saw the triathlons at the Southport Broadwater, and then uh, a northern track up towards SeaWorld, essentially, before they get to a point uh, just beyond bigger waters. They actually take a, uh, a U-turn on Bayview Street, where Bayview Street hits the corner of Broadwater Street. That's where they make the U-turn and, and start to head south, work their way around one of the, uh, the nearby uh, roundabouts there, and, and a essentially go all the way south down to Burley Heads, essentially along the coastal road all the way. So from, from Main Beach at, at Surfers Paradise, they keep pushing down towards Broad Beach and then past Mermaid Beach down south further to Miami. And then they get to uh, essentially a point right near the Burley Heads National Park uh, and the Burley Heads you know, Surf Life Saving Club there. And they make uh, the U-turn and head back north again Steering a little inland at one point, uh, only to get onto the Gold Coast Highway to that point where there isn't really the, the coast road in between uh, Broad Beach, uh, should I say Burley and Miami. But uh, essentially they're along the beach all the way, which has provided wonderful pictures coming back of, of these, uh, these competitors pushing along and pretty easy access for all of the fans coming out. And at most parts of the course, it must be said, there are, there are fans looking on... Uh, certainly don't have to be two and three deep at, at these outer reaches of the, of the course but when they get closer to the finish no doubt I'm sure it will thicken up in, in that respect. <laughs> the unfortunate thing I think uh, particularly for the wheelchair racers and probably will be a little bit of a, a impediment for the runners as well this is a portion of the Gold Coast that they uh, they make sure you know you can't drive too fast along them so there's lots of these little speed humps not really sharp ones but Every every uh, every few moments, Fernley just has to sort of push his chair a little bit harder to get over a speed hump, and then he gets a little ride down the back of it and a little bit of momentum. So the effort does get paid off on the other side, but the, the speed humps are uh, a part of this course because indeed it does track along a part of the Gold Coast roads that are uh, are so close to the beach. Fernley's gone through 30 k's, so. Let's see what the gap is between he and that Chates group of three. He's been leading essentially by the best part of 70 seconds. At halfway, it was a minute 10. That's split between Fernley and the two Englishmen, Simon Lawson and John Smythe, and the Canadian Tristan Smith, who was in that chase group as well. And at 30K, we're about to get the numbers come through. Fernley's gone through 30K in one hour, two minute and seven seconds. And... 
Still just seeing vision now of the chase pack of three. They're, they're well behind and yet to go through that 30k split. So it's been a lonely push out in front in a race perspective for Kurt Fernley. He's had the company of the Gold Coast locals and any who have come down to experience this marathon this morning being cheered along all the way. Uh, the clock's now up to 40 seconds and beyond for this split for the chase group of three with Jones, Smythe and uh, also uh, Lawson of England all in the white strips pushing their chairs along. One minute, uh, one hour, two minutes and seven seconds for Fernley through 30k. Uh, just to let you know, but because of the, uh, I think generally uh, two and a bit hours for the uh, the marathon in the men, a bit longer for the women in the chairs. It takes uh, around about the uh, one hour 40 mark for the elite men, and. Uh, about the same as well for the elite women, depending on the pace in the race. Fernley's having to do a lot of work out in front by himself, so I doubt that this time will be as fast as we have seen throughout uh, different points of his career. We've gone through the 90-second point as far as the gap between Fernley and the uh, the chase group who are just making their way over one of the, uh, the speed bumps, and, and now we're getting a time through. So at 30k, Fernley is on his way to Commonwealth Gold Hill, barring any missed demeanor he is one hour a one minute and 40 seconds ahead of the chase group of three that of simon lawson of england tristan smythe of canada and john smith of england so great news for fernley as we get to the back quarter of the men's marathon in the t54 in the last check we had on the women's t54 madison de rosario and eliza alt connell are in the group of four at the front of the race so we will keep you very close to the two marathons as they progress but uh, in this hour on grandstand as we bring you the closing stages of the wheelchair marathons a great chance to reflect also on what was a successful night last night for australia particularly in team sports we'll start with the action at the gold coast hockey center where australia took on the black sticks of new zealand in the gold medal game your commentators alistair nicholson and simon orchard Australia inside the circle, a chance, a deflection, a goal. Kleinschmidt on the board. Mitten took the ball inside the circle for Australia. Got it to Kleinschmidt, and Australia goes one goal to the good. Five minutes into the second quarter. Third goal of the tournament, and it was Ogilvy who took it in. Ogilvy passed to Mitten. Mitten then, with a good ball, to Kleinschmidt in a dangerous position and he beat the New Zealand goalkeeper Richard Joyce Australia with the opening goal here and the gold medal match they lead 1-0 so Dawson and Mitten set themselves here and it will be Beal to inject for Australia penalty corner Australia 1-0 it's Dawson with a slap shot and ricochets in Australia does go 2-0 up approaching half time and it's Dawson who went bang. Kookaburras 2, New Zealand nil. Two minutes to go until half time in the gold medal match at an erupting Gold Coast hockey. Beal goes over the top of his opponent. Another Australian ball. 21 seconds to go. Beal near the sideline. Backtracking for Australia. He controls it well. Ball pops out. New Zealand will have possession with just 10 seconds to go. It comes to McAleese. He clears it away. Off the stick of Sharp. Wetton's after it. Listen to the crowd. The countdown's on. Australia, the Kookaburras, kings of the Commonwealth Games again. Six consecutive Commonwealth Games. Gold medals for the Kookaburras. All the players charge out onto the field. They form a tight huddle. And there are pats on the head, left, right and centre. In the middle of it all is a champion of international hockey. For Mark Knowles, his decorated career ends the right way with a fourth Commonwealth Games gold medal for Australia. What a career it's been and what a night it's been for these kookaburras. They have beaten New Zealand two goals to nil and claimed gold yet again and maintain their perfect record in the Commonwealth Games. Alistair Nicholson and Simon Orchin on duty there at the Gold Coast Hockey Centre last night. And 
a particularly fantastic result for the retiring skipper of the Kabaras, Mark Knowles, who was the flag bearer for Australia at the opening ceremony. The only remaining member of Australia's golden team from the Athens 2004 Olympic Games. And now he will hang up the green and gold to very quickly turn his attention to working in a high performance and leadership capacity for the Queensland Academy of Sport. And be interested to know the emotions that were going through the body of Mark Knowles at the conclusion of that game. Let's find out because the Aussie Kookaburra skipper is chatting here with Alistair Nicholson. Mark Knowles, congratulations. What a way to finish. What's the emotions like now, right now? Oh, relief, I reckon. Um, when I spoke to you yesterday, I, I really was honest in saying that I'm ready for this. I think the team was ready for tonight. We're in a good place. But there's always that unknown about being able to play in a final with all of the outside stuff. And I brought the boys in really heavy at the start of the game. And I said that this 18 is what matters right now. I said, uh, you know, that our family loves us, our friends love us, but we have to do it tonight. And to lead a group out like that makes me so proud. Um, I've been able to lead Team Australia 700 odd athletes a week and a half ago. And that was amazing. These guys are so much, you know, more of my family for such a long time. And for me to lead this group tonight is just the, I think, the perfect end for me. <laughs> it's been such a big part of your life. You came in, into this program as a teenager and, and here you are at the end. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and it makes me look back. Um, as I said, I got to reflect a little bit last week around the flag bearing. Um, I got to think about, you know, growing up on the grass fields in Rocky, uh, where I'd got to, the person I've become, the person who I want to move to my family, my friends, and I see a group of guys uh, that feel a certain, you know, inspiration or desire um, when I'm playing, and that's what I had when I was 19, 20, and someone like Brent Livermore and Bevan George and Wells and those guys were talking to me. So that's the person I want to be, and I'm just glad those guys bought into the process after Rio. You've got a medal ceremony to get to. How special will it be to get one more goal to fourth at Commonwealth uh, Games? Absolutely amazing. Uh, I can't believe it's, uh, it is a fairy tale. They say that you get fairy tales. I don't, I don't believe in that. You have to work really hard. But I think this, term, uh, this team deserves it, and I'm going to celebrate and enjoy it with me mates because I don't get to go on tour again. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve it. Congratulations, mate. Thank you, mate. Cheers. <laughs> Watch out for Mark Knowles and the Kookaburras if you're in and around the Gold Coast, so it sounds. The retiring captain of the Australian men's hockey team there with Alistair Nicholson. The noise that you hear in the background is the gun for the women's marathon. So they are on their way, the 17 women that will be chasing gold here around the streets of the Gold Coast, including the three Australians, Virginia Maloney, Jessica Trengrove and Lisa Waitman. So we'll keep you up to date with that and hopefully bring you the closing stages as well here on Grandstand. Quentin Hull with you. It's a glorious Sunday as we embark on the final day of competition of these magnificent 21st Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast. Uh, just before we finish on the hockey though, uh, let's also uh, hear from one of the real characters, the Energizer Bunny of the Kookaburras, Jacob Wetton, here again with Alan. Jake Wetton, Queenslander, Commonwealth Games gold medalist here on the Gold Coast. How much does it mean to you? Oh mate, that's unbelievable. That's, yeah, I won't forget that for a long time. And to do it for Nolsey tonight, knowing he was bowing out, Oh, mate, he, what a guy. What an absolute legend of our game and legend of a bloke. He's just unbelievable. And for us to do that for him, yeah, what can I say? He's just just so proud of him and what he's done for hockey in Australia. How significant do you think the legacy he leaves is? Oh, mate, since his first game to his 325th, I think, it's he's done everything the, the game has to offer. Um, and, mate, oh, I just so proud to be a part of a short journey of his um to call him a friend and to call him a mate is yeah something's pretty special and oh mate he'll leave a legacy he'll be he'll be uh he'll be missed that's for sure but yeah we'll enjoy tonight with him it's a special moment i suppose you've got plenty of friends and family here tonight yeah mate they're, they've come from all over queensland to be down to support me uh, my wife flew over from perth uh yeah, mum and dad from Brizzy. My, my aunties and uncles are all here and my friends from my junior club have come up from Brizzy. So, yeah, to have them here is pretty special and, yeah, to do it in front of them means a lot. Jake, thanks for your time. Congratulations. Thanks, mate. Jacob Wetton from the Kookaburras with Alistair Nicholson. Australia 2, New Zealand nil, and that perfect record for the Australian men's hockey team in Commonwealth Games history continued last night at the Gold Coast Hockey Centre.
Great night for the Opals as well in the basketball. We'll give you a little bit more on their 99-55 win over England in just a tick. But let's give you an update on the progress of the two T54 Elite Wheelchair Class marathons that are on course currently around the streets of the Gold Coast. Kurt Fernley of Australia leads. He's out in front and has been for the majority of the race. He's got a 1 minute 40 second gap at the last checkpoint, which was through 30 kilometres. He leads a group of three chasers, Simon Lawson and John Smith of England, along with Tristan Smythe of Canada, uh, the trio that are trying to chase down the man from Carcor. But Fernley leads and has done throughout and looks pretty comfortable, it must be said, with that lead of 1 minute and 40 seconds at the last checkpoint. Then we've got news from uh, Alexandre Dupont, the Canadian who beat Burnley inside the main stadium at Carrara in the 1500. Dupont currently in fifth place, four minutes from the lead. And the other Australian in the field is Jake Lappin, who at the last check, 30 k's through, was six minutes behind Burnley. So it's Kurt out in front by a minute and 40 seconds and seemingly headed for gold on this glorious Sunday morning on the streets of Surface Paradise and Surrounds. Now in the women's T54 marathon, tracking at the same time on the street, they're just a little bit further back from the, the men's leading pack, but uh, there is a group of four in the women's T54 out in front and two of those pushers are Australians, Madison Di Rosario, the champion from the 1500 from inside the main stadium along with her veteran countrywoman, Eliza Alt Connell, terrific to see at 36 years of age, a mother of three is out there pushing so well for Australia, she's in that lead group with one of the very unique stories of these games, Jay Jones who was a gold medalist in the triathlon be exceptional if she could pick up another medal here well, she's certainly in the fight. She's in that group of four. Uh, and also Samantha Kinghorn of Scotland. So two Australians, Di Rosario and Alt Connell, in the lead group in the women's T54 with the Englishwoman, the triathlon champion, Jay Jones and Samantha Kinghorn of Scotland. The women have just been set on their way. Virginia Maloney, Jessica Trengove and Lisa Waitman representing Australia there. And the men's race starts at 10 past 8 local time. Burnley has just gone through 35. K and he has a big lead so getting ever closer to the finish for Kurt Fernley it looks like he is headed for victory so I think at this point in time great to hear from the journey of, of this man through so many parts we know of his great athletic career two Paralympic gold medals multiple world titles be it in New York be it in Boston uh, be it in, uh, in London he has not only redefined wheelchair sport in this country he's done so much to redefine so many thoughts perceptions and ideas around those who live their lives in wheelchairs and those that live their lives differently to the majority of australians a terrific insight to the life of this inspiring australian kurt fernley speaking here with Vernia. well look i've got to have a crack at it don't i i've got to have a crack at it People have given me this unbelievable, unbelievable opportunity, this unbelievable stage, this unbelievable amount of respect that I could sit here and I could, I could take it and pat myself on the back or I could actually have a real conversation about something that's meaningful, about making sure that without the gold medals, you know, without Kokoda, without the green and gold uniform that I have the absolute privilege to wear, would I be able to enter your business? Would I be able to be employed? Would you offer me a? Would you offer me a job? Like there's a reason we've we've got lots of people, massive amounts of people with disabilities struggling to get employment, struggling to catch planes. So are we? Today for me, I'm almost done. So I can have a have a crack at some stuff while I'm up here flying, mate. There are just some. Amazing things to come out of this. If a conversation about employment can be triggered again, about access can be triggered again, then I'm grateful to play a part. And Kurt, has this been sort of burning inside you and you've just been waiting to kind of get this pesky sports business out of the way? <laughs> or is it something that you go, you know, this is my role now, this is what I've got to do? No, this was, this was a week of being treated with so much kindness and respect, a week of being held up for to this unbelievable level of, I don't know how to say it, but respect that's been given me and privilege that's been given me that I just, when that happened, I thought I'd better, I've got to make that worthwhile. What about that um, medal around your neck? How do you feel about that tonight? I know it's not there yet. You're yet to be on the, uh, on the, on the podium, but... 
How do you feel about tonight? Uh, look, I, honestly, I really just want to have a hug from hug from Sheridan, a hug from my boy. Um, I want to see my old man. and uh, You know what? I, I do... I'll share Alex's moment. I know the fellow. He's a good bloke. I'll, I'll share a bit of joy with his, uh, with his gold medal. Um, and I know that tomorrow and the next day I will look at that silver with a lot of pride because that was a hard race. <laughs> but right now it's still a bit raw and my arms are just aching a little bit and I have to kind of put that to the side and use everything I can to win the marathon on Sunday. I'm going to let you um, go so you can have a hug and a massage on those arms, man. But, Kurt Burnley, what a pleasure it is and a privilege to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. So, Burn Young speaking to Kurt Burnley the morning after he picked up a silver medal in the T54-1500 on the track with Alexandra Dupont. Oh, breaking the hearts of many Australians with the uh, Canadian pushing to victory inside the main stadium. But I don't think there'll be any heartbreak. The only tears that'll be happening out in the streets of Surface Paradise and surrounds this morning will be tears of joy because Kurt Fernley has a huge lead as we get to the closing stages of the men's T54 marathon. And the crowds here are absolutely magnificent at every point at the side of the road. There are people out there clapping him on kneeling down with phones to get that low-level selfie of the chair of Kurt Fernley in action, and he is pushing his way to a gold medal here, the last time that Fernley is competing in the green and gold for Australia. So he says, so he says, he's going to go on to compete some other marathons, of course, around the world. But at this point, well, the last story I read, he was 99% sure that he was not going to go on to the Tokyo Paralympics. But who would deny this man anything? The way that he has redefined all boundaries in his sporting career and beyond. Absolutely fantastic for Kurt Fernley to be in such a strong position. And... Well, can he enjoy it? I reckon he can, even though his arms will be hurting. He's done this so many times. There will be a part of his heart that is lapping up every little moment here because the joy and jubilation and love that has been poured out by Australia and those that are lining the streets of the Gold Coast this morning would almost be uh, lifting the chair and pushing him over the line. He hasn't got too long to go to complete the men's T54 marathon and take Commonwealth gold in his last appearance for Australia. But just before the crescendo of the men's marathon, a chance to give you an update on what's happening in the women's marathon. A real chance for double gold for Australia this morning because Madison Di Rosario and Eliza Alt-Connell have just gone through the 30-kilometre checkpoint and that pair, along with two other competitors, lead the race. Jay Jones of England is there. Samantha Kinghorn of Scotland is there. And that group of four has the lead of a best part of three minutes over Nicole Emerson of England and Diane Roy of Canada. So the chase group in the women's event is to be precise two minutes and 49 seconds behind the lead group of four which features the two Australians Madison D. Rosario and Eliza Alt-Connell and then the Englishwoman Jay Jones who won the triathlon and the Scotswoman Samantha King Horn. So those competitors will be pushing in behind the lead group of the men's race which uh, still sees Burnley out in front. He's almost hit the 40k point, which means there's only a couple of k to go after that. And at the 35 kilometre split, Simon Lawson of England, John Smith of England and Tristan Smythe of Canada were the three closest, one minute and 41 seconds behind. And just hearing Kurt speak there about his wife Sheridan, they were married in, in 2010 and uh, son Harry born not long after uh, the uh, the Paralympics in London in 2012, the year after, in fact, in, in 2013. And hopefully uh, Mum Jackie and Dad Glenn are here. I'm sure they are to, to watch him push in his last race for Australia in the green and gold, having uh, won the Athens gold medal in the Paralympics in 2004 and then back that up on the streets of Beijing in 2008. The last couple of... Paralympic marathons have been a bit frustrating, it must be said, for Kurt Fernley. Uh, the finish down the Mall in London in 2012, he was pushing very, very hard to try and break the back of the Englishman David Weir, who's been a good mate of his and uh, a great competitor of his over the years, but Weir was absolutely dominant in London. He won the 1500, the 5k and the 10k all inside the London Stadium, was a hot favourite to win on the streets of uh, the Mall and indeed 
Weir was able to push his way to victory there ahead of the Swiss, Marcel Hoog. Fernley, uh, basically, uh, his, his engine blew, as he described it back in 2012, in the last 300 metres there, trying to pinch victory from his two mates, Hoog and Weir. And uh, Weir got the gold with the Hoog, the silver, and Fernley pushing into the bronze medal position. And then uh, the silver bullet, as he's known, from Switzerland, just pipped Fernley in an amazing finish in the Rio Marathon there with Fernley finishing in second position. So uh, it, two gold medals in the Paralympics in the marathon in Athens and Beijing, a bronze in London, a silver in Rio. But he is pushing all his... Uh, he's pushing his way to victory here. Just getting a look at it now. The, the time on the clock, one hour, 22 minutes, and almost 23 minutes now. Getting a close-up on our infield vision here of the arm still pumping, the, the top of his body just leaning forward in a, oh, in, a, in a method of exhaustion and also forced just to keep the chair going. He looks pretty tired, Kurt, but he's got a huge break. And uh, again, fans standing barefoot on the pavement, just watching him go by, giving him a clap at every point. Kurt Fernley in his last push for Australia is on the way to a, a well-deserved gold medal here. And that chase group of three uh, have got the minor medals between them. So just suggest that perhaps the, the tactics of Simon Lawson, John Smith and Tristan Smythe will be uh, not so much to, to try and chase down the leader because Fer Fernley is gone. He's, he's often ready to, to claim the gold medal and the glory at Southport. So the, the tactics of Lawson, Smith and Smythe will be, uh, let's see if we can get ourselves in the best position to claim the silver medal until we don't miss out on one because one of those three competitors will miss out. Fernley makes a right-hand turn and uh, is, is pushing his way back towards the finishing portion of the course. We're not too far away from getting the split at uh, 30 k's. Beautiful shot from the helicopter above the surface paradise skyline on this glorious Sunday morning. Just making his way over one of the bridges which uh, are up near the, the broad water in the spit here at Surfers. And Fernley has got a huge lead. The women's marathon is underway as well. The men's marathon starts at 10 past 8 local time. Just see if I can give you an update from the women's marathon before we get to the conclusion of the men's race. Fernley just going through 40k, so those splits will come through in just a minute. He's just got a little over 2k's to push to claim a Commonwealth gold medal to add to his two Paralympic gold medals and multiple world marathon titles uh, in the big races around the world. So in the women's marathon, we haven't got a 5K split as yet, even though they have been out there and on the roads for uh, a little over 25 minutes. Virginia Maloney, Jessica Trengove and Lisa Waitman are the competitors for Australia in the 17th strong field in the women's marathon. And then uh, shortly we'll see the last of the, the four marathons uh, be called to the start and sent on their way. That's at quarter past eight local time. Liam Adams and Michael Shelley representing Australia in that race there. Uh, no 5K splits as yet for the women's marathon, but you could see a broad smile, that must be said, from the Glasgow gold uh, bronze medalist Jessica Trengove during the opening phases of the race. She was absolutely beaming because the crowd was about four and five thick around Southport Broadwater there where they're going to start and finish the race. Uh, just the look of, uh, wow, how good's this after running her way into the top ten in the marathon at the World Championships in London last year and a bronze medal four years ago in Glasgow. She's perhaps the most credentialed of the three Australians and high hopes for her on the streets of the Gold Coast this morning. But inside the last 2K of the men's T54 Elite Wheelchair Class Marathon here at the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games and Fernley has gone through the 40 kilometre checkpoint in a time of 1 hour 25 minutes and 9 seconds. We've just had a bit of vision of the group of three chasing him uh, and they're still a long way back. The, the splits are now up to the 90 second point as far as the difference between first and those who are coming through in behind him. It's going to be a gold medal for Kurt Fernley and what a glorious way he will be able to push to celebrate here. We now get the split through 40k for the chase group. They're a minute and 35 seconds behind the Australian. Smith, Smythe and Lawson have the minors among them. One will miss out, one will get silver, one will get bronze, you'd assume. 
But it's a golden push here for Kurt Fernley, who's puffing his cheeks and those arms which have carried him among, oh, along so many streets of the world. Not long to go now for Kurt Fernley to claim the gold medal here at the Commonwealth Games in what will be his last push in the green and gold with some marathons to come. He's going to race London a little bit later on this year. But what a career at 37 years of age, four-time New York Marathon champion, four-time Chicago Marathon champion, two-time Paralympic Marathon champion, a world championship to go along with that. He's won Tokyo. He's won them all. He is an absolute icon of Australian sport, of world para sport, and he's on his way to crowning glory in green and gold here on the Gold Coast. He has had to push himself from the start here. No one along with him. So often he's been able to be in a pack and they use the slipstream to, to push out in front. But Fernley knew that his times and, and his career was much more that of a standard of world class compared to the others around him. So he's had to do the job himself out in front. He's been happy to do that. He's pushing up a little incline at the moment, but the crowd is urging him on. They are three and four thick here as we get closer to the end of the men's marathon. And he looks a picture of exhaustion at the moment, Fernley. That huge upper body is slumped over the chair and leaning on the steering portion of that magnificent contraption which has pushed its way into the hearts and minds of Australia. He's still got a bit of work to do, Kurt Fernley. He looks very, very tired, but he's about to be lifted by the roars of his countrymen and women here, lining the streets around Southport. Fernley hasn't got far to go. Again, he gets the hands going down on the rims of the chair, whacks in the steering, continues to push that chair almost to the hour, hour and a half mark for Kurt Fernley. And listen to the crowd around the finish point here at Southport. Kurt Fernley pushing the chair, driving his way to victory in the T54 marathon. There's a grimace on his face. There's exhaustion in those eyes, but he is continuing to get those arms down on the rims of his chair. There's a smile, I think, on his face, Kurt Fernley. You can hear the roar of this huge crowd. Fernley pushing his way to victory in his last appearance for Australia. We're about to see the clock tick to the one and a half hour point. And there's a smile on his face. Australian flags being waved everywhere. You can hear clappers, those, those cardboard contraptions that you fold up like a fan and whack to make a noise. They're there as well. He's taking a big breath as he's about to make one of the last turns of the race. He wheels his way around to the right-hand side and is about to enter the finishing portion of the course. The kid from Karkor, who's pushed his way into the hearts and minds of Australians. Kurt Fernley is going to take the gold medal on the Gold Coast in his last appearance for Australia. You beauty, Kurt Fernley! He has done it! One hour, 30, 25 seconds for the legend that is. Kurt Fernley, Commonwealth Gold for the T-54 Superstar. He's draped in an Australian flag. He is slumped over his chair in exhaustion. He is the gold medalist. He has lived up to all expectation. And those that were here to see it will never forget the Sunday morning where Kurt Fernley finished his career for Australia pushing his way to victory in the 21st Commonwealth Games. And now our attention turns into the race for the silver medal. Tristan Smythe of Canada has taken a bit of a march on the two Englishmen in Simon Lawson of England and, uh, and John Smith of England as well. They come around the turn. Smythe is just in front for Canada. He's got a uh, lead of a couple of metres. The two Englishmen fighting it out behind him. Into the finishing section of the race. It looks like Smythe is going to be good enough. He's pushing hard. He's pushing hard and it's going to be Smythe of Canada. Oh, oh no, Smith of England got there in the end. My apologies. It was Smith, not Smythe. Smith of England ahead of Lawson of England. And Smythe of Canada in third position. And... Well, the two chairs of the two Englishmen lock up beyond the finish line. So, gold to Burnley of Australia. 
silver to Smith of England and bronze to Lawson of England with Smythe of Canada. My apologies, getting the the fourth place finish there. One hour 30.25 for Kurt Fernley. One hour 31.43 for both Smith, Lawson and Smythe. The clock essentially stopping at the same time for those three races in behind. And the jubilation of Kurt Fernley is about to be doubled up, you'd think, because Matty De Rosario and Eliza O'Connell are in contention for the Women's T54 Marathon, which is going to finish shortly. So a number of you listening on ABC Radio will take your regular news bulletins on the east coast of Australia heading towards that major news junction at 7.45. But never fear, you can always hear the end of the other races and... What we've got to come today as well on the ABC Listen app or on Grandstand Digital. But before those of you that are departing, do take the news. Let's see if I can give you the most recent information I have on the women's marathon. They're almost at the 40k split and it looks like Madison Di Rosario is trying to make a push for victory. We're now getting vision here at the start-finish line of Matty Di Rosario making a break of about 10 metres on her three competitors that have shared that lead group for the majority of the race. Di Rosario out in front of Jade Jones of England, the triathlon gold medalist, Samantha Kinghorn of Scotland, and Eliza O'Connell, also of Australia. But Di Rosario, who was a dominant winner of the 1,500 metres inside the main stadium, she is out in front and pushing for gold. She was the winner of the Australia Day 10K on, uh, on January 26 this year. And uh, through 35 Ks, she's been able to put on a, a little break here of uh, 15, 20 metres, and Maddie D's decided now's the time to go. Which is great news for Australia, hoping to double up on the marathon success after Kurt Fernley claimed victory a short time ago. If you are departing for the news, never fear, we will be back later on the day for the conclusion of the women's and the men's marathon with three women and two men for Australia competing in those two races. The women have been out on course since uh, 10 past the hour here and uh, since quarter past, 20 past it was, wasn't it? Yes, 20 past seven they started, quarter past eight local time to start for the men. Farewell to those going to the news. We'll be back a little bit later on. And for everyone else with us, we've got a wonderful bit of vision here at the moment of, of Kurt Fernley and son Harry at the finish line. Sheridan, his wife's there as well, clapping. He was a very, very hot favourite, Kurt. And fantastic that he has been able to live up to expectation and claim the gold medal. Big finish coming up in the women's race. Di Rosario looks to have split the pack. She's out in front. And Eliza O'Connell is trying to also drive a bit of pace into the group behind them with... Jones just uh, behind her chair and then Kinghorn at third wheel of that pack a couple of lengths back. I just slow down for a minute and take a turn. And you're seeing on the vision we're seeing at the moment of the chase pack, Di Rosario is not in picture. She has pushed off way into the distance and into the lead here. And she looks like, and I now can just see it ahead of what is a wide shot at the back of the, the chase pack. Di Rosario would have a lead, best part of 60 or 70 metres out in front. And whether or not O'Connell is, is driving the group to try and catch up to her or whether she's just trying to drive pace into the race to take some juice out of the arms of Jones and Kinghorn to give her the best chance of winning a silver medal. I'd suggest it's probably the latter because certainly at this point there's no indication of Jones going back out to the breeze to... to to try and drive this pack as well and we often see that in wheelchair racing that uh, there will be groups trying to work together to, to, to share that push out in front but Alt Connell, no, she's just out there driving a pace I think it's a race for silver Madison D. Rosario has blitzed them she has raced ahead which is fantastic news just see if there's any further information coming in on Jake Lappin, who was the other Australian in the men's T54. 
He was in around sixth position at the last checkpoint we had, repeating the time for Fernley of Australia in the men's marathon. 1.30.25, 1 hour, 30 minutes, 25 seconds. John Smith of England, 1 hour, 31 minutes and 43 seconds. Simon Lawson, also 1 hour, 31, 43. And Tristan Smythe, also 1 hour, 31, 43. So that group of three, very close together. And now here at the start finish line, we can see Jake Lappin pushing his way to the tape. And he is finished in sixth position. In a good push finish, he just got sixth ahead of Callum Hall of England. Uh, so the group... That isn't accounted for. The position not accounted for. There is fifth place. Alexander Dupont, the winner of the men's 1500 inside the track, has claimed fifth place. Fernley first. Smith and Lawson of England second and third. There's your podium. Smythe fourth. Dupont fifth. So Canada four and five. Then Australia sixth with Jake Lappin. Callum Hall of England seventh. And still to finish in the men's marathon. Ikebe Bozio of Ghana and his countryman Felix Achempong. So seven of the nine are home in the men's T54. And very shortly, Madison Di Rosario, you'd expect, will greet the crowd at Southport and claim double gold. So that's now 11 gold in track and field for Australia. And... A 12th beckons here with Di Rosario having a break of about 80 metres on the track on the on the race course here as they're about to enter the final phases of the event. A reminder, later on today on Grandstand, coverage of the closing ceremony at the back end of the day. But before then, we've got some sport to get through and some high-class sport at that. In the rugby, the semi-final for the Australian women up against Canada is at 11 o'clock local time. The other semi-final sees New Zealand take on England. Let's be optimistic and put 2.40 Australian Eastern Standard Time into your brains because that's when the gold medal game will be contested at Ravina in the rugby sevens. But of course, the Pearls have got to get past Canada first. Semi-final at 11 a.m. this morning, the Pearls against Canada. The other women's seven semi is New Zealand against England. That women's gold medal match is at 2.40 local time while the story for the men there in the five to eight classification games starting against Kenya a little bit later on today in the basketball the boomers will try and emulate the feats of the opals who won comfortably over England last night the Aussie women winning 99 to 55 and the men have had a dominant campaign will take on Canada at 11 30 this morning and uh, Canada making that gold medal game and an unbelievable buzzer beat a three-pointer got them victory over New Zealand in a semi-final yesterday but the Boomers have been a force that has not been matched across the Commonwealth in these games so you'll be able to join us from 11.25 Eastern time on local radio for coverage of the men's basketball gold medal match with that to tip off at 11.30 local time and then the Diamonds taking on England in the netball gold medal match. The majority of you hearing that, if you're with us through South Australia and New South Wales, you'll be off at the footy at that point. But of course, the app, digital, all there for you to claim coverage of the netball gold medal match between Australia and England. And then our coverage of the closing ceremony begins at 8 o'clock tonight. I reckon there'll be a bit of cultural stuff. There'll be some good music, some speeches, party. It'll be great to see what the Gold Coast puts on for its final flourish before it sends everyone to celebration in the airport. There'll be plenty of fun around the streets of the Gold Coast this evening. I reckon plenty of queues at the Gold Coast airport tomorrow morning as this city tries to handle the huge exodus after a, a wonderful 11 days of competition with not only the athletes but their families, spectators, officials from all around the world. Madison D. Rosario is pushing her way to victory in the women's T54. We're not too far away from the end here and getting vision before they enter the finishing section here at Southport of Eliza Old Connell making a good break and it looks like it could be 1-2 for Australia. Let's focus in on the last phases of the women's T54. Maddie D. Rosario 
who couldn't compete in Glasgow in the 1500 because she picked up a blood clot on the flight to the UK. She made up for that in a sense by winning on the track in the 1500, a dominance performance inside Karama, Karara, excuse me, earlier on. And it looks like she's ready to claim a golden double. Di Rosario was a 14-year-old when she was picked to complete, compete in the Beijing Paralympics in 2008. She's pushing her chair up an incline at the moment. Oh, Connell is making ground on her, but I don't know whether she's going to get there in time. Di Rosario looks tired. Oh, Connell sees the chair of the leader in front of her, and then she has a little peek behind her to see the Jade Jones of England, who's currently in third, is about 20 metres back. So they are strung out the last three in the women's T54. Four and five deep leaning over the barricades here near the start-finish point at South Point. South Port. But Madison Di Rosario at 24 years of uh, 24 years of age hasn't competed in a lot of marathons but she did have great form on the streets of Sydney and around the rocks during the, the 10k earlier this year Alt Connell's really putting on a big surge she can see the chair of the leader in front of her and also of the pursuant Jade Jones behind her so the 37 year old Eliza Alt Connell's doing everything she can to finish off this marathon strongly but Di Rosario she leans on her chair for a moment and just whacks in the steering, takes in the right-hand turn, very careful to ensure there's no misadventure on the last technical part of the course. Now she straightens up. She's got 100 metres to push, and the marathon T54 will be a golden double for Australia. First Kurt Fernley, and now Matty Di Rosario adds the marathon to the 1500 that she won inside the stadium. Another goal to Australia, Madison Di Rosario stops the clock at 1 hour 44 neat and a huge smile on her face and Eliza O'Connell comes through 13 seconds behind the 37 year old playing silver. Bronze in a wonderful story, Jade Jones, who finished at this part of the Gold Coast in the triathlon only a few days earlier. She is the bronze medalist, only three seconds behind Old Connell. Kurt Burnley is waiting to greet Matty D. Rosario, and here comes Louise Savage pushing her chair to pat the back of someone that she has helped so much in her career. The coach now absolute legends of wheelchair sport just beyond the finishing tape at Southport to share in the sunshine of this glorious Sunday morning. Samantha Kinghorn now comes through in fourth position in the women's race. Oh, what joy and what a morning in the sunshine, literally and figuratively, for Australian para sport with two of the poster children Kurt Burley and Madison Di Rosario claiming victory in front of their adoring fans here. And we've got two marathons to come. Two down and two to go. And the good news is that uh, a couple of the Australians in the women's marathon that have been on course for a little under the hour, just getting a look on an outer portion of the course where Jessica Trengove and Lisa Waitman are in a group of around eight athletes at the front of the women's marathon. The men's start is not too far away. We're only two Aussies going around there. Unfortunately, Matt Hamer injured and can't compete alongside Liam Alley, Liam Adams and Michael Shelley. But that women's race started 36 minutes ago. And Trengove out on course along with Waitman looking in uh, pretty good form. Just absolutely beaming smile from Jess Trengove when she started the race. Seeing the huge crowds and just knowing in her heart the support that she's going to get on the course here. Trying to turn Glasgow bronze into a Gold Coast gold. News is about four minutes away for some of you. Or the end of our coverage at least for the time being. A lot of you going back to Macca to continue Sunday 
morning as uh, we usually have it here on ABC Radio, but it's a little different this Sunday with the conclusion of the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games. We will rejoin you for the finish of the women's and men's marathons a little bit later on today. I'm just giving you the details once again. In the women's marathon, gold to Madison Di Rosario of Australia in a time of 1 hour 38 minutes 31 seconds. Victorious by 27 seconds over her compatriot Eliza Alt-Connell, 1 hour 38 minutes and 58 seconds. Jay Jones of England took the bronze medal and Samantha Kinghorn of Scotland finished fourth. And the Australians in the men's T54, Kurt Burnley, living up to expectation in what is his last race in the green and gold of Australia. A dominant performance in the men's marathon, pushing out in front all the way to stop the clock at 1 hour 30 minutes and 26 seconds, winning by a minute and 18 seconds over John Smith of England. England also claiming the bronze medal through Simon Lawson, Tristan Smythe of Canada, just missing a place on the podium. Jake Lappin of Australia also pushing in that race, finishing in sixth position. So a reminder of what's coming your way on Grandstand's coverage of the final day of these 21st Commonwealth Games. Not only the two marathons to finish up, but some big team sport medals to be decided. The first of them, well, won't be decided at uh, 11 a.m. this morning, but whether or not the Australian Pearls can push into the gold medal will be decided from 11 a.m. The Aussie women take on Canada in the semi-final of the Rugby Sevens. The other semi-final features New Zealand and England. The gold medal match in the women's Rugby Sevens at 2.40 this afternoon local time. The men's basketball tips off the gold medal game between the Boomers and Canada gets underway at 11.30. You'll be able to hear that on ABC Local Radio, Grandstand Digital and via the Listen app from around 25 minutes past 11. And the netball grand final, centre pass between Australia and England at 1 o'clock this afternoon. Of course, our regular football will be available for most of you, and it, as is always the case on ABC Grandstand, if you're not generally happy with what's on the wireless, just go to the app. The choice is yours. You can always just pick and choose what you'd like through the website abc.net.au slash grandstand, the ABC Listen app, or if you are in a metropolitan area which has digital radio, you can twiddle the dial and pick things up there as well. So we'll take a little break here on the Gold Coast. More to come from the men's and women's marathons a little bit later on, but what a start to the final day of the 21st Commonwealth Games. A golden double for Australia in the marathon. Congratulations, Kurt Fernley and Madison D. Rosario. Hey. The 2018 Gold Coast Commonwealth Games. A group of four for the majority of the race. She made her move and was a 13-second victor over Eliza Alt-Connell. Great to see the veteran competitor pick up a silver medal for Australia. And a great story, too, with the bronze medalist in the women's T54 wheelchair marathon. Jade Jones of England was seven seconds further behind Alt-Connell, 20 seconds behind the leader in the end. And that gives Jade Jones not only a bronze in this morning's race, but that adds to her gold medal that she picked up in the paratriathlon earlier in the meet. So what a wonderful sporting performance from Jade Jones of England. There is news from the streets. We have the women's marathon getting to its concluding stages and the men's marathon in its middle point. So let's start with the good news in the women's marathon that two Australians are in the lead group of four. Two of them have got bronze medals at the Commonwealth Games previously, hoping to improve. The most recent of those bronze medals came in Glasgow four years ago to the South Australian Jessica Trengove, and she is in the lead group along with Lisa Waitman, who picked up bronze in Delhi in the 2010 version of the Commonwealth Games. They're in a group with the Kenyan Sheila Jeratich and the Namibian flag bearer Halalia Johannes. So uh, what was a group is actually just splintering a little 
as they move their way into the closing phases. We do have a split to give you through 35 k's. So we're inside the last 7 k's in the women's marathon. And it looks like Johannes is starting to drive the pace up front. Waitman is going with her and Trengo's just dropped back 7 or 8 metres for the time being. Then there's a gap of 15 or so metres back to Jeretic of Kenya. So uh, Johannes and Waitman out in front at the moment with Trengove not beha far behind. So Australia's second and third on the road in the women's marathon inside the final 7Ks. And uh, Johannes is a very well-credentialed marathon runner, uh, 11th at the London Olympics in 2012 and was fifth in the Glasgow marathon four years ago. Obviously high expectations for her as the flag bearer of her nation. So she's the one at the moment who's threatening to spoil the party for the two Australians, the 39-year-old Lisa Waitman, who, uh, as I mentioned, was uh, the bronze medalist in Delhi, along with terrific performances at Olympic marathons of recent times. Most recently in, in Rio, she was 31st, and uh, in London in 2012, she finished in 16th place, while Jess Trengove, uh, her best performance internationally and one of the best international performances by a women's uh, marathon representative for Australia in many, many years, came last year in London, where she finished 9th in the World Champion Marathon uh, there. Uh, that was after she was the best of the three Australians in Rio, finishing 22nd. But at the moment, it's Waitman in 2nd place, Trengove in 3rd, and Johannes is a very tall figure, the Namibian flag bearer, wearing... Uh, very long gold socks which go up to the uh, just be beneath her knees. She's out in front and looks pretty good. Waitman, a much smaller figure behind her, trying to power along and to keep up in this race for gold. And it looks like Trengove is just struggling a little bit at a moment. So uh, it's Johannes first, Waitman for Australia second, and Trengove for Australia in third place in the women's marathon. So that's where we're going to be focusing in on in the next little bit and then we'll roll into the final stages of the men's marathon where there are two australians competing the delhi uh, silver medalist and glasgow gold medalist liam adams expected uh, michael shelley my apologies should uh, be the uh, the favorite runner here but liam adams his compatriot is there as well he was also in glasgow and finished in the top 10 uh, seventh to be precise and the last split that we had for the men was uh, just a short time ago through the 25 kilometre point and uh, there's a, a group of half dozen or so up the front with both Shelley and Adams involved in that group Callum Hawkins of Scotland uh, Solomon Mutai is also there the Ugandan who is a very well credentialed runner a former bronze medalist at the World Championships in Moscow in 2015 then the reigning champ the Gold Coaster Michael Shelley along with Kenneth Mungara of Kenya and Liam Adams of Australia in that top five. A short break back to the Lesothan, uh, Matabele and the Tanzanian Makulu. So that group in the lead in the men's marathon as they've gone through 25 kilometres is a group of five predominantly. Hawkins of Scotland, Mutai of Uganda, Shelley and Adams of Australia and Mungara of Kenya. If you are just waking up, great to have you with us for the final day of competition. There's heaps in store here on Grandstand, all the way through to our coverage of the closing ceremony, which begins at 8 o'clock this evening back inside the Carrara Stadium. But team sports, as is the case for most multi-sport events, is the focus for the final day of competition in the rugby. Unfortunately, the men aren't in medal contention. They will play their qualifying match or start their qualifying phase with a game against Kenya. But the Aussie Pearls, the women's sevens team, trying to replicate their Rio gold medal with a semi-final appearance against Canada. That event is due in about one hour and 20 minutes from now. The other women's semi-final is New Zealand against England. The gold medal match for the rugby due for... Tw uh, 20 minutes to 3, so about 2.40 Australian Eastern Standard Time here on the Gold Coast and across the East Coast this afternoon. So 2.40, that gold medal game in the women's rugby sevens, but without getting ahead of ourselves, the first time check is 11 o'clock because that's when the Pearls take on Canada in a semi-final. We also will see the men's basketball team, the Boomers, involved in action this, uh, this morning. In fact, the tip-off for the gold medal game against Canada 
is due in about an hour and 20, an hour and 10 minutes from now, 11.30 in fact. Well, hold on, I'll get my maths right. It's not 10 o'clock yet. <laughs> it's already been an early morning. So an hour and 50 minutes from now for Australia to take on Canada. The Boomers are uh, very, very hot favourites there. Canada are a surprise finalist after an amazing finish to their semi-final with a big bomb from the perimeter going down to sink the hopes of the tall black. So Australia and Canada in the men's basketball and then in the netball, which gets underway at one o'clock local time. It's Australia taking on England with the Diamonds, a hot favourite to take the gold medal there. So heaps of team sport, the women's sevens, the men's basketball and the women's netball all in those medal matches today. Last night, the Opals were dominant victors over England by 99 points to 55. And the men's hockey team, the Kookaburras, sent retiring captain Mark Knowles out in style with a 2-0 victory over the Black Sticks from New Zealand. That was after the Kiwis had taken the gold in the women's over the Aussie Hockey Roos earlier in the day. But let's get back to the streets of the Gold Coast and the closing stages of this women's marathon. And Johannes of Namibia at the moment is leading by about 10 metres. And this looks like a telling break as we're getting to the back end of this women's marathon. Uh, tall, as I said before, the flag bearer for Namibia at the opening ceremony. And she's got that break over the 39-year-old Lisa Waitman, who is the best placed of the Australians at the moment in the women's marathon. Uh, trying to ensure that that gap doesn't become too uh, hard to manage. But it must admit, just uh, seeing the pictures coming through, it looks like a pretty telling move from the Namibian, who uh, is in good form. Waitman in second, and then it looks like Jessica Trengover is struggling to keep up the pace. A further or 20 metres back is the... Uh, bronze medalist from Glasgow currently in third place. Uh, Johannes has still got a, a very high gait and uh, hands are up around her chest, looks very relaxed in her stride. Uh, Waitman a different running style, a shorter runner using her hands, basically swinging around her hips to drive her body along the pavement around uh, the Gold Coast and Trengove in the dis distance with the sunglasses on. Again, her hands a little higher up around the chest, but uh, she's struggling to keep the pace, even though there are thousands of fans lining the streets here. Time on the clock in the women's marathon, 2 hours 21 uh, 50, so almost at the 2 hour 22 minute mark, and uh, this would be a terrific result for Namibia if they could get this gold medal. They've only ever won three golds in uh, the history of the Commonwealth Games. Uh, one of those coming in Melbourne, one in Manchester and one in Victoria, Canada. So uh, this is a, a great performance so far from the, uh, the flag bearer from the opening ceremony, Halalia Johannes, with a telling lead, but we'll wait to see if there's a late surge from Waitman or, for Treng or from Trengove to a challenge for the gold medal. Just a reminder for our listeners in the West, if you are tuning in in the uh, the far reaches of the western part of the continent, you'll be off to your 7.45 news bulletin as normal, but you'll be back with us after the news in 15 minutes time, that's 8 o'clock Perth time, so we'll bring you all the women's marathon results then. If you'd like to hear, of course, the conclusion, get on the ABC Listen app, look for the Commonwealth Games button, or if you do have digital radio, you can pick it up there. So just a reminder in two minutes' time for our listeners through Perth and WA, if you're listening to us on analogue radio, 7.45 news coming up as usual, but if you don't want to miss a beat, get on your phone, get on the app, get on your laptop, get the digital radio going, and we'll be able to keep you up to date because the conclusion of the women's marathon is not too far away. I'm sure there's plenty of smiles in the West if you are just to getting up and haven't heard the news about Madison Di Rosario because that's where she's from originally, of course, now working predominantly on the East Coast underneath the great Louise Savage. But she was a dominant victor in the women's marathon. One hour, 44 minutes dead for Maddie Di Rosario to double up on her gold medal haul here on the Gold Coast, having claimed the 1,500 metres inside the main stadium during the, uh, uh, that portion of the meet. Eliza O'Connell just repeating for Australia. She picked up the silver medal uh, 13 seconds behind Maddie D and then Jay Jones of England, the bronze, and Kurt Fernley 
of course, claiming the men's gold medal in the marathon, one hour, 30 and 26 seconds. So just before our listeners throughout Western Australia go to the news, uh, it's a pretty telling break, it must be said, from Halale Johannes, the Namibian flag bearer, leading the women's marathon inside the next uh, last couple of Ks, ahead of Lisa Waitman and then Jessica Trengove, currently in third place. And the good news that Liam Adams and Michael Shelley are among the leading contenders in the men's marathon, which is tracking about an hour behind that women's race. So if you are listening to us in Western Australia, farewell to you for the news at 7.45. As I said, the app online and on digital. If you'd like to continue listening to us otherwise, we'll be back with you in a quarter of an hour from the streets of the Gold Coast for the 21st Commonwealth Games. And for those continuing with us, it's a very telling move from Halilia Johannes of Namibia getting vision now as they come over one of the last bridges returning towards the Southport Broadwater Parkland start finish point and Johannes has a lead at the best part of oh, 40 metres you'd have to say over Waitman and then a further gap back to Jessica Trengove currently in third position but she looks good does Johannes 37 years of age has a personal best time of 2 hours 26 minutes and 9 seconds. Has already run a, a sub 2.5 hour marathon though this year and she's looking in fine form. I've just gone through the 40k checkpoint. And as far as the lead on the clock is concerned, it's a 19 second break for Johannes, the 37 year old, over the 39 year old Australian Waitman. And then a further 21 seconds back to Trengo, the 30-year-old who was the bronze medalist four years ago and finished ninth in the World Championships in London last year. Just taking on some liquid. Tall runner is Halalia Johannes. Her form looks very, very good. Certainly a, a lovely morning to, uh, to go for a run if you're that way inclined. It, we've had some mixed weather throughout these Commonwealth Games. Bursts of Real wet stuff, uh, particularly early in the Games. The triathletes who were competing around this same geography on the Gold Coast were lashed with some fierce storms about a week ago. A couple of nights at the pool and the track. Those outdoor venues had sprinklings of rain, but it's generally been really good the last couple of days. And hopefully we will get fine weather for the culmination of today's events. Uh, most of them inside, it must be said for the netball, the basketball as well. Fans going to the rugby at Rabina today, hoping that they can get good weather. It should be a fantastic combination to the rugby sevens at Rabina today, but then a uh, lot of people going to the closing ceremony tonight, and I did see some information from the chairman of Goldock, Peter Beatty, indicating that there are still a few tickets left to the closing ceremony, so if you're listening to us locally on ABC Gold Coast or around Brisbane and or northern New South Wales and you think, yeah, it might be worth the drive going to the Gold Coast tonight to, to check out the closing ceremony. I think there are a few tickets available. Well, that was certainly the latest information that we received from Peter Beatty, the chairman of Goldoff. Getting to the closing couple of Ks now in the women's marathon and the gold medal looks headed to Namibia with the 37-year-old flag bearer Halalia Johannes surging to the line to claim what would be Namibia's fourth gold medal in Commonwealth Games history for the nation which is neighbouring on South Africa and the southern part of the African continent. It's been a very, very strong race for Australia over the years. The first ever women's marathon was held in Edinburgh in 1986 and the first two marathons were won by Lisa Martin on Dieke and then Heather Turland won in Kuala Lumpur in 1998 before Karen McCann, the late Karen McCann, went back to back in Manchester in 2002 and then that unbelievable triumph in 2006, only a matter of years before her tragic premature death to, due to, to cancer. But uh, we had a bronze medalist in the shape of, of Waitman in Delhi, a bronze medalist in the shape of Trengove four years ago in Glasgow, and it looks like uh, the minor medals will be the prize for the Aussies work of around two and a half hours so pounding the pavement here 
around the Gold Coast because the gap for the leader, Johannes, as she's about to enter the closing section of the race, is still about 60 metres. Waitman's doing her absolute utmost uh, at 39 years of age, trying to continue to surge to the line, but the, the gap hasn't narrowed whatsoever. And Johannes is about to run into the closing portion around the Southport Broadwater Parklands and claim the gold medal in the women's marathon. Waitman currently in second position and Trengove currently in third. Plenty of fans leaning over the barricades here with their green and gold, taking pictures with their smartphones, taking uh, taking it all in here on this glorious Sunday morning. The, the sun absolutely beating down. Uh, the athletes haven't looked too distressed, it must be said. Look, it's 42 and a big case. It's exhausting stuff for mere mortals. But these guys are, are very well... Uh, credentialed and, and well experienced athletes and you, you can get a pretty good read on the look of their gait and the, the look on their faces. Johannes looks really fresh it must be said her stride is still strong. She's got her hands up towards her chest and not leaning over in a in a, in a desperate effort to try and keep the body lunging forward whatsoever her gait looks really really good and this is an outstanding performance from the Namibian flag bearer, flag bearer Halalia Johannes as she just goes down a little bit of an incline and we get to see the distance between first and second it's a good hundred meters for the uh the australian waitman to to make up and i, I doubt she'll be able to do it with uh, trengove off in third position and you can hear now that the pa about to welcome halalia johannes into the finishing section of the course the flag bearer for namibia it's been a pretty good omen in the athletics. Caster Semenya was the flag bearer for South Africa. So too Michelle Lee Ayi, the British Virgin Islands' first ever medalist, also carried the flag. So those in track and field that carried the, uh, the flag into the opening ceremony have had a pretty good record of leading their teams or leading themselves to victory. Speaking of leading teams, Mark Knowles, of course, led his team to victory last night for the Kookaburras, and he was the flag bearer in the opening ceremony. Not quite sure what time this afternoon we'll find out who's going to be the flag bearer in the closing ceremony, but that's uh, something that will bring you throughout the day on grandstand here. Johannes is extending here. This is an exceptional run. It's more than 100 metres, the gap back to the Australian Waitman. And the scenes here on the Gold Coast on this Sunday morning, they are seven and eight deep at some sections. No early morning surf today for some of them. No stroll with the dog, forget that. Well, take the dog down to the barricades, make sure it doesn't jump over. We saw one of them bark and nearly jump out at Kurt Fernley during the men's T54 marathon. There's a police motorcade, a couple of bikes uh, along with a car in front of Halalia Johannes. Not too far away from completing victory in the women's marathon and claiming Namibia's fourth ever gold medal in Commonwealth Games history. She makes the final bend. It's a, it's a gentle little right-hander and now she's got the final straight. And the tape will greet her shortly. It will be gold to Namibia and Halalia Johannes has done the best on the Sunday morning stride around the streets of the Gold Coast. Fifth in Glasgow, but here on the Gold Coast, the 37-year-old Halalia Johannes will come to the tape and take gold in the 21st Commonwealth Games in a tick over two hours, 32 minutes. 2.32 and 40 seconds to be precise. She crosses herself as she goes over the line and now kneels on the asphalt and is breaking down in absolute jubilation. She is a, a puddle of joyous tears beyond the finish line. And now the Aussies cheer because they can see Lisa Waitman coming to the finish line. She's got a bit of a grimace on her face, but she's being roared on by this crowd at Southport. A silver medal coming the way of the 39-year-old Australian. She's straining every sinew as she gets to the line and finishes second, two hours, 33 minutes, and ooh, probably 13 seconds, two hours, 33 minutes, 13 seconds for Lisa Waitman. She is exhausted. She is just holding her body above the ground as an attendant comes to give her some water. And now... Perfect timing, really. All medalists have had this closing straight to themselves. 
First, Johannes for the gold. Second, Waitman for the silver. And for consecutive Commonwealth Games, Jessica Trengove will take the bronze medal in the Commonwealth Games, as was the case at Glasgow Green here at Southport Broadwater. The 30-year-old from South Australia, she's straining as she gets to the end. She's got a smile on her face. She crosses the line and looks exhausted, happy. <laughs> she's sort of wavering around a bit now that she's told the legs to stop. Oh, she raises her sunglasses to the peak of her forehead and, oh, she looks really, really tired, actually. There's a couple of attendants that have come in to help her. But, oh, half the battle is once you've told the mind to stop, the body realises as well, and you're lucky to stay on your feet after more than two and a half hours of action. Gold to Australia in the T54 men's marathon to Kurt Fernley. Gold to Australia in the T54 women's marathon to Maddie D. Rosario, where Eliza O'Connell picked up the silver medal there as well. And add a silver and a bronze to that count in the women's marathon. Halalia Johannes of Namibia, victorious over Lisa Waitman of Australia and Jessica Trengove of Australia, running through the final times of the top three in the women's marathon. Johannes's time, two hours, 32 minutes and 40 seconds, more than seven minutes also outside Lisa Martin's games record, which was set in Auckland in 1990. Waitman's time, 2 hours, 33 minutes and 23 seconds, to be precise. 2 hours, 20, 33, 23 for Lisa Waitman. And Jessica Trengo's time, 2 hours, 34 minutes and 9 seconds. So we'll keep calling them in. We're still waiting on Virginia Maloney to come through. And the last uh, news that we had of Maloney was uh, she was back in about 15th place, a quarter of an hour behind the leaders at the 35-kilometre checkpoint. Maloney has not gone through the 40k checkpoint as yet, so we'll wait to give news of her once she comes to the finish line. In the men's marathon, a big move is being made by the Scot, Callum Hawkins. He has gone out to the front, and we've got information for you through the 30-kilometre checkpoint that Hawkins has a 41-second lead over Michael Shelley, the gold medalist from Glasgow four years ago. Tes uh, Tespo Matabile of Lesotho currently in third place, 53 seconds from the lead and 12 seconds behind the second-placed Aussie and Shelley. Uh, and then back in fourth, the second of the Australians, is Liam Adams, 55 seconds from the lead. So it's Hawkins of Scotland... 40 seconds to the good of Shelley of Australia, the Matabele of Lesotho and Adams of Australia. That is your top four in the men's marathon as we speak. So we'll catch our breath here for the moment. Later on today, we've got those gold medal games coming up in the court sports, the netball and the basketball, but they're already on court deciding the medals for the men's basketball, the bronze medal game is underway. The man for the day on the boards is Corbin Middlemass. Thanks, Clinton. We're watching Scotland and New Zealand here. And we're early stages of the third turn. There's just five points separating the two teams. So a couple of possessions in it. And a little closer, I think, than most people anticipated. So New Zealand leading here by five possession as Abercrombie pulls up from the baseline and hits a neat jumper. He has been phenomenal. Thomas Abercrombie has 18 points. And I watched a little bit of the game yesterday, albeit I was out the boxing, but particularly in the second half when it looked like Canada were going to finish over the top of New Zealand, Thomas Abercrombie, with his solo effort, almost dragged the Tall Blacks kicking and screaming through to the gold medal match by himself. He's got 18 points here and is largely responsible for New Zealand's lead in the game. They're up by seven. They lead 43 to 36, playing for bronze. And against a Scottish team, they're expected to, uh, to handle, given the fact they should probably be in the gold medal game on talent alone. Upset by a young Canadian outfit yesterday. And Canada's average age, just 22. They'll play the gold medal match a little later this morning when they meet the Australian Boomers. And the Boomers, no surprise, going in there, a warm favourite, trying to repeat the feats of the Opals last night and claim gold in the basketball. So as we leave you for the time being, eight to go in the third. New Zealand lead 43-36 in the bronze medal playoff against Scotland.
Good on you, Corbin Middlemass there at the basketball. So, repeating the news from the men's marathon, Callum Hawkins of Scotland is making a big charge here. And he's got a nice break over Michael Shelley of Australia with Liam Adams in fourth place at our last check. But uh, gold in the women's marathon to Halalia Johannes of Namibia, silver to Lisa Waitman of Australia, and bronze to South Australia's Jessica Trengo. A number of you on the uh, eastern states are about to return to your normal Sunday programs, but stay listening to ABC Radio, even here on Analog Radio. We will be bringing you the final stages of the men's marathon so they'll cut in and take the closing stages of the marathon and then we will be back with you for live coverage throughout the day at 11.25 Eastern Time with the start of the coverage to that men's basketball gold medal match with Corbin who uh, as we said just uh, a moment ago 11.30 Eastern Time when the Boomers take on Canada for gold. If you're listening to us uh, through the Eastern States Enjoy the rest of uh, the programs throughout the morning. Stay tuned because the closing stages of the men's marathon will come your way. Have no fear. We've got you covered here on the ABC. Are you on the hunt for something new to listen to? The ABC Listen app has a bundle of new podcasts to make you laugh, cry, think and feel. Like the jaw-dropping and thought-provoking Australian storytelling in the new season of Tall Tales and True. And all the latest highlights from the NRL and more with Ladies Who Lead. Or keep in the loop with all the latest news and pop culture. Out of the loop is the cheat's guide to not missing out. Hear them all now on the ABC Listen app. ABC Grandstand. Gold Coast 2018. On ABC Radio. And on ABC Grandstand Digital. Digital. If you're with us in Western Australia, welcome back to Grandstand's coverage of the 21st Commonwealth Games. Quentin Hull with you on the streets of the Gold Coast where the news from the Women's Marathon is that Australia has picked up a silver and a bronze medal. Gold to Namibia's Halalia Johannes, the flag bearer for the African nation at 37 years of age, was a strong victor in the end over Australia's Lisa Waitman who claimed the silver medal and bronze to Jessica Trengove of Australia. So... Uh, Gold to Namibia, silver to Australia, bronze to Australia, Waitman the silver, Trengo the bronze. They were the way things finished up in the women's marathon after earlier today. Kurt Fernley claimed victory for Australia in the men's T54 elite wheelchair class marathon. Jake Lappin back in sixth place, while for the Australian women, Maddie Di Rosario was able to make it a golden double in the marathon. And also a golden double for herself. She picked up the 1,500 metres inside the main stadium and ensured it was double gold with the wheelchair marathons on the streets of the Gold Coast. A victor by 13 seconds over her countrywoman, Eliza Alt connell who claimed the silver, and Jade Jones of England, finishing with the bronze medal. It was a pretty emotional scene, it must be said. So many Australians out there cheering on Kurt Fernley. We'll bring you the end of that in just a moment. But before then, Corbin Middlemass is keeping us across the basketball action today. It's Australia and Canada in the gold medal game in about 90 minutes from now, but the battle for bronze is on the boards. What's the latest between Scotland and New Zealand? Thanks, Q. A seven-point game here. The Tall Blacks lead at 47-40. to 40. Well, you can cut that margin back to five. There's Garth Murray with a nice reverse layup penetrating through the paint. So... And Scotland giving New Zealand all they can handle here. We we're a little bit shocked yesterday that the Tallbacks didn't make it through to the gold get medal game. Just a phenomenal finish. The last gasp, a buzzer beater from Mamadou GI yesterday as he banked his three pointer off the backboard. As the board lit up, the buzzer beater to send to Canada. The incredibly young Canadians through to the gold medal match with Australia, and as a result, New Zealand find themselves in the bronze medal playoff and I think in conventional wisdom would suggest they'll wipe the floor with Scotland who were no match for Australia yesterday losing their game by about 60 points and instead Scotland taking it right up to the Tall Blacks at the moment as Murray drives again kisses one off the window, doesn't go and Rakawa can work it up the floor for New Zealand just a five point game the Kiwis lead 47-42 to 42, and Thomas Abercrombie the star performer for either side. He's got 18 points and the most pivotal player on the floor. He's sitting at the moment. Another error on the offensive end. As Pledger drops the ball, it drifts over the baseline. And Scotland will get possession back. 
been a game of runs as often happens, particularly in international basketball. Scotland started by scoring the first six points of the game with back-to-back triples. New Zealand then scored nine points in a row at one stage in the opening quarter. They got out to a five-point buffer and probably thought at that point that they would continue to pull away from Scotland, but the Scots hit back. They ended up leading at quarter time, 21-19. to New Zealand outscored Scotland by eight in that second term. And as a result, wrestled back the lead in the game. It's the Kiwis by five, five minutes to go in the third. Gareth Murray, who's got the stickers on both hands, the tattooed sleeves, he somehow picked up a cut on his uh, inside of his right forearm. It's just been addressed at the moment as he heads to the bench for the time being. Here's Mike Vigor on the floor. A lad from Perth in Western Australia, his family heritage in Scotland. He was actually born in Scotland and playing for them here at the Com Games as Bunyan, the point guard, throws it away trying to find Jimenez in the paint. Skips over the baseline. So errors on both ends. 47 to 42. The Tall Blacks by five. And the five on the floor for New Zealand. Tarangi, Delaney, Kenny, Natai and Pledger. For Scotland, Vigor, Jimenez, Bunyan, Nilon Lino and Achara. Eight left on the shot clock. Again, another sloppy offensive set from the Kiwis. Natai up top, finds Tarangi. Tarangi drives to the paint, little run is good for two. That lands, 49 to 42, it's a seven point spread. 4.30 to go in the third quarter. So the Kiwis uh, hanging on here to this lead as Vigor drives, he can't quite put it in. So New Zealand by seven points, midway through the third quarter in the bronze medal playoff, but Scotland certainly giving them all they can handle at the moment with uh, the game on the line. We'll be back for more updates, but for now let's take you back to the streets of the Gold Coast and Quentin Hull. Thanks, Corbett. Looking forward to your call throughout the afternoon of the Boomers Gold Medal match against Canada, which starts in a little under 90 minutes from now. An update from the streets of Surface Paradise is that Callum Hawkins of Scotland is surging away with the men's marathon. He's got a telling break. They're just going through the 35-kilometre checkpoint, and uh, he's got a very good lead ahead of Michael Shelley. We'll get a time on it in a moment, but uh, it, it's been a, uh, a very... Uh, promising move from the Scotsman Hawkins, who's got uh, quite the pedigree when it comes to marathon running with uh, his family heavily involved. He coached by his father, Richard, and uh, his older brother, Derek, actually finished ninth in the Glasgow Marathon behind Michael Shelley. So uh, perhaps a little bit of family revenge is on the cards here for Callum Hawkins, who interestingly has bib number 2-2. Two, two, out on the streets here of the Gold Coast. But uh, fourth at the World Championships in uh, the marathon in London last year. A very well-credentialed runner, Callum Hawkins. And as it stands, it looks like he's going to put pay to the hopes of Michael Shelley going back to back, having won in Glasgow. He was hopeful of winning on the streets of Surface Paradise and surrounds here was Shelley. Uh, a silver medalist in Delhi was Shelley. So, uh, gee, wouldn't it be a terrific performance if it could continue to punch along here and maintain form and have another top two finish in the Commonwealth Games. Further down the course, we have Liam Adams. There are only two Australians in this uh, men's marathon with Matt Hamer pulling out due to injury. Uh, at the last time split that we had, Adams was in fourth place with Tespo Matabele of Lesotho in third. We'll just get them through the 35K point. For those of you just rejoining us on radio in WA, have missed the end of the women's marathon. We'll get to that in just a moment, but... Uh, Good timing here just to see if we can put a clock on the gap between Hawkins and the medalists. It's a 1 minute 42 lead over Shelley. And uh, Matabele now coming through 2 hours and uh, two minutes and 17 seconds behind Hawkins. So the best part of a uh, tick over half a minute behind Shelley. So that, that gap between silver and bronze around about that 30 second mark but Hawkins is striding away and uh, with uh, inside 7 k's to go has a dominant lead in the men's marathon a short time ago it was a wonderful moment for Namibia's flag bearer Halalia Johannes uh, 37 years of age 5th in Glasgow but she's turned that into gold on the Gold Coast for those that were away let's bring you the final stages of the women's marathon 
not too far away from completing victory in the women's marathon and claiming Namibia's fourth ever gold medal in Commonwealth Games history. She makes the final bend. It's a, it's a gentle little right-hander and now she's got the final straight. And the tape will greet her shortly. It will be gold to Namibia. And Halalia Johannes has done the best on the Sunday morning stride around the streets of the Gold Coast. Fifth in Glasgow, but here on the Gold Coast, the 37-year-old Halalia Johannes will come to the tape and take gold in the 21st Commonwealth Games in a tick over two hours, 32 minutes. Two, 32 and 40 seconds to be precise. She crosses herself as she goes over the line and now kneels on the asphalt and is breaking down in absolute jubilation. She is a, a puddle of joyous tears beyond the finish line. And now the Aussies cheer because they can see Lisa Waitman coming to the finish line. She's got a bit of a grimace on her face, but she's being roared on by this crowd at Southport. A silver medal coming the way of the 39-year-old Australian. She's straining every sinew as she gets to the line and finishes second, two hours, 33 minutes. And... Probably 13 seconds, 2 hours, 33 minutes, 13 seconds for Lisa Waitman. She is exhausted. She is just holding her body above the ground as an attendant comes to give her some water. And now, perfect timing really. All medalists have had this closing straight to themselves. First, Johannes for the gold. Second, Waitman for the silver. And for consecutive Commonwealth Games, Jessica Tringo will take the bronze medal in the Commonwealth Games, as was the case at Glasgow Green here at Southport Broadwater. The 30-year-old from South Australia, she's straining as she gets to the end. She's got a smile on her face. She crosses the line and looks exhausted, happy. <laughs> she's sort of wavering around a bit now that she's told the legs to stop. Oh, she raises her sunglasses to the peak of her forehead and oh, she looks really, really tired actually. There's a couple of attendants that have come in to help her. But oh, half the battle is once you've told the mind to stop, the body realises as well and you're lucky to stay on your feet after more than two and a half hours of action. So there you have it, the women's marathon placings. Halalia Johannes of Namibia, the gold, two hours, 32 minutes and 40 seconds. Lisa Waitman's time, 43 seconds behind the winner, two hours, 33 minutes and 23 seconds. And Jessica Tringo's time, two hours, 34 minutes and four seconds. There is one other Australian who is still circling in the marathon, Virginia Maloney, and uh, to see if we've got a time for her as yet. Uh, no, she hasn't gone through the finishing line as yet, has Maloney, so I'll just double check to see if we've got some information from the split at 40. She was in 16th position, so uh, no finish as yet for Maloney, but she's still circulating, and we'll give you her placing when that comes through. Earlier this morning, though, so much expectation for the T54 wheelchair marathons, for not only the, the women's race, but particularly for Kurt Fernley's last push in green and gold. What a wonderful champion he has has been not only for Australian sport but for Australian society and uh, it's the last time he's going to be racing in the green and gold and uh, there were a few lumps in the throat it must be said when Kurt Fernley was getting to the finishing line at Southport. And listen to the crowd around the finish point here at Southport. Kurt Fernley pushing the chair, driving his way to victory in the T54 marathon. There's a grimace on his face. There's exhaustion in those eyes, but he is continuing to get those arms down on the rims of his chair. There's a smile, I think, on his face, Kurt Fernley. You can hear the roar of this huge crowd. Fernley pushing his way to victory in his last appearance for Australia. We're about to see the clock tick to the one and a half hour point. And there's a smile on his face. Australian flags being waved everywhere. You can hear clappers, those, those cardboard contraptions that you fold up like a fan and whack to make a noise. They're there as well. And he's taking a big breath as he's about to make one of the last turns of the race. He wheels his way around to the right-hand side and is about to enter the finishing portion of the course. The kid from Karkor, who's pushed
finished his way into the hearts and minds of Australians. Kurt Burnley is going to take the gold medal on the Gold Coast in his last appearance for Australia. You beauty, Kurt Burnley. He has done it. One hour. 25 seconds for the legend that is Kurt Burnley Commonwealth goal for the T54 superstar he's draped in an Australian flag he's slumped over his chair in exhaustion he is the gold medalist he has lived up to all expectation and those that were here to see it will never forget the Sunday morning where Kurt Burnley finished his career for Australia, pushing his way to victory in the 21st Commonwealth Games. It was a great way to start your Sunday morning, that's for sure. Better than going down to your local cafe for a bacon and eggs, get your takeaway coffee, take it down to the streets and watch Kurt push his way to victory. Never forget that. Fantastic stuff from Kurt Fernley victory in the men's T54 marathon. We'll hear from him in just a moment but just wanted to bring you some developments in the closing stages of the men's marathon. Tespo Matabele of Lesotho has stopped running. I'm not quite sure why but Matabele has stopped and he was in the bronze medal position at that time. Uh, Munyu Mutai of Uganda was just behind him then Liam Adams of Australia a bit further back. But uh, certainly the closest challenger to Michael Shelley, who was in second place a short time ago, Matabele, has stopped running, uh, and he's in strife. But Callum Hawkins of Scotland is away and blitzing the field, and he's got a good lead with uh, only three or four kilometres to run. We'll bring you the closing stages of the men's marathon, but uh, so much of the build-up to this final day of the 21st Commonwealth Games has been about Kurt Fernley's final push in the green and gold, he took the tape first and he spent some time with our own Duncan Hunstar. Kurt Fernley, congratulations. Gold medal in your final marathon, final race. Uh, is this how you scripted it? <laughs> oh, gee, I don't think you can script it this way, but this is how I dreamt it. This is the, this is the dream run. You, you go out there knowing that anything can happen, knowing that there's certain realities that you're going to have to deal with. And... You know, this was the, the, the absolute, the absolute dream, mate. And I'm just grateful, mate, just grateful. You said to me a couple of nights ago that you were going to leave nothing in the tank when it came to the marathon, and, and that was the way it panned out. Yeah. Oh, gee. Um, sorry, mate, I'm feeling a bit... You're right, you're feeling it now. That, that's OK. Um, Do you want to take a break? Nah, mate, I'm not, not going to get much better, I don't think. Look, it's been a... Uh, it's just been awesome, mate, and I, I buried myself out there. And I, I said a few, but few, few days back, a few weeks back, that um, look, I've received so much. I've received so much for the last 20 years of racing chairs. I've received so much support. So many, so many people who kicked doors down for me when I hit them, and uh, I figured that today was just my chance to say thank you. And the only way I thought I could say thank you was just go out there and bury myself, mate. Just bury myself in it. An hour and a half, and just just go out there and fight, and 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 that's that's exactly what I did, and thankfully it was enough. Where is this triumph going to sit? Where's you're right, you're right. Where's this triumph going to sit, Kurt, in your career? Made nothing better than this, nothing better. I, I got second in Sydney with all of my family around me. I I, I, I get a win on the Gold Coast as as a part of uh, being the part of the bid. For the Gold Coast, I was a part of the part of the athlete reps. So I was an athlete ambassador, and right over there are, are the people that mean the most to me in the world. So you're talking about your family? Yeah, my family, my friends, people that have just people that have just been there. You know, been there when it when you're getting the, the kicks in the guts. You know, and they're the ones that have been there to pick me up. And oh, this is good as it gets. You're gonna miss this? No, <laughs> I love it. I love it, and I made the most of 25 years of it. I absolutely just did everything, everything to it. But that's all I got, mate. That's all I got. And I'm going to run for the rest of my life, but it's other people's turn to have a go at this grand goal.
Yeah. You got one final message to the Australian public. There's so much love for you out there. Oh, mate. So many people have contributed to what I've done. Just that if you see a kid out there say that he wants to race wheelchairs, say that he wants to start running, say that he wants to play ball, buy him a pair of shoes, buy him a wheelchair, be a part of it. Because you just never know where that one bit of kindness will end up. Good family, congratulations on the gold and your career. Thanks for talking to ABC. Thank you. What an outstanding human. What a great interview from Duncan Hunstale. Kurt Burnley speaking there with our own Duncan Hunstale. And here at the finish line, Virginia Maloney has finished. She's got there in the women's marathon. Just, just her body is almost limp from the hip up and the, the legs are about to collapse, but she's had a, a towel put across her back and there are attendants here to, to put her in a wheelchair, but uh, she, she's smiling and drinking water and she looks like she's going to recover okay but yeah she looks actually her facial expression is in total contradiction to the rest of her body at the moment virginia maloney she looks absolutely delighted but she can hardly hold herself up she is 16 22 minutes behind the winner halelia johannes now the drama that we've got here in the men's marathon is that Callum Hawkins is flat out staying on his feet. The Scotsman who is in front has on a couple of occasions gone into the gutter and he's fallen. He's fallen into the gutter in the men's marathon. The Scotsman leading within the last couple of k's of the men's marathon has crashed into the gutter. And there are crowd members there trying to urge him to get up and he does get up. He does get up and he's wavering back onto the gutter again, somehow just gets himself onto the road and is running once more. Oh, there are barricades there. He'll be lucky not to crash again, this young man. The leader of the men's marathon is waving all over the course, wavering all over the course. What a dramatic scene. And there are Australian fans, Welsh fans, Scottish fans, in near attendance, helpless to watch, just cheering him on. And there's a couple of motorbikes that aren't too far away from him. He's up and going and he's up and up an incline at the moment and his legs are still ticking over. This is an extraordinary finish to the men's marathon. He's about to go over one of the last bridges before the finishing section of the course. And the question is, will he be able to get himself home? He hasn't gone through the 40 kilometre checkpoint as yet. So I'd suggest he's still got at least three Ks to go. Two hours, six minutes, 12 seconds and counting for the Scotsman. And he looks in all sorts of trouble. Can he get his way home? Callum Hawkins of Scotland. He, he's got a bit of rhythm back in his, his gait at the moment, albeit wobbling left, wobbling right. He is just willing his body to tick over. Left in front of the right, left in front of the right, wavering towards the cones in the middle of the road, wavering to the barricades towards the edge of the bridge, but still moving forward. This is unbelievable scenes with the surface paradise skyline in the background and the Scotsman almost face planting into the asphalt. Only a couple of kilometres from home in the men's marathon. His body will not stop. He, oh, he stopped now. He's gone into the barricade and, and held himself up for a moment. He gets going again. He is willing every sinew of his body to move. He just goes through the 40k checkpoint and falls to the ground. He falls to the ground and he's trying to push himself up to stand up once more, but I think his body's had enough. After two hours and seven minutes, Hawkins can hardly even raise his body off the asphalt. Unbelievable scenes in the men's marathon on the Gold Coast. Callum Hawkins of Scotland, while leading the men's marathon, is physically spent and the tank is empty through 40 k's. Now the question must be asked, how long can the attendants wait before they go and help this young man who now is almost lying with his back totally on the road? So Hawkins has gone through the 40k checkpoint and has then stopped. And Michael Shelley is about to run past him and run into the lead in the men's marathon. Absolutely unbelievable scenes here in the men's marathon. And you think back 
to the very, very early days of women's marathon running when Gabrielle Anderson Scheiss stumbled her way across the finish line in 1984 in Los Angeles. It took her five minutes and 44 seconds to stumble around that final lap in 1984. That was in the home stadium. At least she finished. But here, Hawkins basically has his face on, on the road and, and now after giving the young man a couple of opportunities to try and keep going, the medical attendants are going to come and and try and help this this stricken, this exhausted, this spent Scott. What scenes here, Michael Shelley is running now and is about to go past him. The Scotsman cannot move. He has run 40 kilometres of the marathon. The, his legs will not take him the final two and a bit case home and Shelley runs past him and into the lead in the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games Marathon in scenes that will never be forgotten on this Sunday morning on the streets of Surfers Paradise and Surrounds. In the background, we see the Surfers Paradise skyline and the, the strewn Scott lying on the, on the road. Callum Hawkins cannot move. Michael Shelley is surging to back-to-back -back gold medals in scenes that defy description. Wow, Michael Shelley into the lead. What must be going through his mind? It is a battle of body, it is a battle of mind, it is a battle of will against yourself, against the elements, against your competitors. But what must go through your heart when you run past a man who can't physically move and is flat on his back, two and a bit case from home in the marathon? Shelley takes a drink, gets a sponge, towels himself down and he looks great. He looks absolutely fine. And now we get a wide shot down this portion of the course and the Scotsman is still, you can see the image of his body still lying on the road with an attendant close by. And the fans are cheering on the Australian to victory. I hope he's okay. I really do. There are attendants watching him, that's for sure. But now our focus turns to the Australian Michael Shelley. Gee, marathons in this part of the world in the Commonwealth Games stick in the memory, don't they? Remember Jim and Rakanga and Gidima Shahanga running out in front of Deke, the two Tanzanians back in 82? Well, at least they completed the course. Deke swallowed it up and won in a magnificent fashion on Coronation Drive and, and down through South Brisbane to finish. But this is not the way that any Australian wants to see it come from behind victory executed. Michael Shelley has run past the man who was the best part of a minute in front of him, strewn on the deck and unable to move. Well, and, and before that, it must be said, we saw vision of the man who was third on the road at that point, Tespo Matabele of Lesotho. He couldn't keep running. He was gone a couple of k's from home. At least he was walking. So trying to work out positioning on the track, I think Shelley's in front. Well, we know Shelley's in front. I think Munya Mutai of Uganda is now in the nominal silver medal position and Luke Adams is third at the moment, the Australian. We haven't had news from Adams for quite some time. But we have had Mutai through the 40k checkpoint. He's two minutes behind Shelley. Hawkins made it to the 40k checkpoint and made it no further. Dear, oh dear. What drama in the marathon. That's why it's got such a special plate in the place in the hearts of just general sports fans the world wide. The, 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 world, the world around and worldwide. It, it, it produces the unbelievable theatre. But Shelley... Let's zone in on him. Two hours, 12 and a half minutes on the clock. His legs are still looking pretty good. He's got Australians at every point leaning over the barricades, cheering him on. The bronze medalist of Delhi, the champion of Glasgow, the Gold Coast native, Michael Shelley, has got a couple of Ks to go less than that now to win the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games Marathon. And to join the likes of Rob DiCostello and Steve Monaghetti as back-to-back -back winners in Commonwealth Games marathons for Australia. Crowd is absolutely roaring just before the official closing section of the course. They're 12 deep at some points here at Southport. 
Shelley's got the arms pumping. He's got a grimace on his face. He's even starting to get a little bit of a wobble up. I think he's very close to the barricade on his right-hand side, but his legs are in control, I fancy. His arms are going. He, he's grimacing. He's giving it everything. I reckon the petrol tank is beyond empty here for Michael Shelley, but his mind is willing him to keep going. The Sunday sunshine on the Gold Coast claimed the leader, Callum Hawkins. It claimed the the man from uh, Lesotho, Matabele, as well. But it hasn't claimed Michael Shelley as yet. Just a little bit of a decline here for Shelley coming into the closing phases of the race. Two hours and 14 minutes on the clock and the PA here at the start-finish line is starting to whip the crowd into a frenzy because Michael Shelley is not far away. We can see him in the distance. We can see the police motorcade starting to work its way into the closing straight. This has literally been last man standing for those in the lead group. Callum Hawkins' body gave up after 40 k's. Michael Shelley's is still going just. And he is putting left in front of right, left in front of right, keeping the body going. Absolutely exhausted. But he's going to run to back-to-back -to -back Commonwealth Marathon Championships. A home victory beckons for Shelley if he can just keep going for the next minute or so. Fans in green and gold roaring. Boxing kangaroos draped over the barricades. ACDC blaring through the speakers. And the 34-year-old local Michael Shelley doing everything to keep his body going to complete the marathon. What scenes to start the final day of the, 31st, uh, the 21st Commonwealth Games. The Australian women are waiting. Waitman the silver, Trengove the bronze in the earlier women's marathon. But they're about to welcome their compatriot into the finishing straight to, to claim the gold medal. Still going, Shelley. He's got the big right-hander to make before he runs into the finishing straight. Sun beating down. Crowd 10 and 12 thick at certain portions of the course. But the man in the gold singlet is still going. Callum Hawkins literally fell down in exhaustion after 40 k's to Scott Hood led by more than a minute in the race. But now Michael Shelley's got to make that right hand bend and he's only got a couple of hundred metres to run. The Glasgow champion will double up on his home pavement here on the Gold Coast. Michael Shelley grabs an Australian flag. In dramatic circumstances we have hardly seen in Commonwealth Games marathon history, Shelley, the 34 year old local, will take the tape, will take the gold and will take back to back Commonwealth titles. Shelley has done it at home on the coast. Two hours, 16 minutes, 46 seconds for Michael Shelley. And he embraces the Aussie team waiting for him beyond the tape. Drama like we have hardly seen before in the marathon. And a lot of the fans here at Southport oblivious to the scenes only 2Ks down the road. Word has got round in the modern day and age. You can't have something as dramatic as that not hit social media. And the discussion around the finishing point has been... Oh, gee, I hope that guy's OK. But what, the Aussie's in the lead. Let's cheer him home. And he looks OK, it must be said. He looks OK, Michael Shelley. Wow. Do you reckon Deacon 82 is dramatic? In its own unique way, 36 years on, Michael Shelley has added another unbelievably dramatic chapter to Commonwealth Games marathon history in this part of the world. We expect Liam Adams to be some chance for a minor medal. Down the road is about seventh, but for those of you who are going to go back to local programs, I hope you've enjoyed picking up the closing stages of that marathon. Gold to Michael Shelley. We'll have the men's basketball at around an hour from now.
But uh, if you are returning to local programs, farewell. Catch you later on in the day on this final day of the Commonwealth Games from the Gold Coast. And now we see our silver medalist entering the straight. Munya Mutai of Uganda will take the silver medal. Fourth in Glasgow, a world championship bronze medalist at the 2015 World Champs in Beijing. And he grabs the national flag of Uganda. Munya Solomon Mutai running to the finish line now. More than two minutes behind the Australian Shelley. But we have two men safely home. Just 10 metres to run for Mutai and he completes the course. Two hours, 19 minutes and two seconds the time for Munoz Solomon Mutai. Two minutes and 16 seconds behind the Australian and Scotland will get a medal. It's going to be Robbie Simpson running into the bronze medal. After his countryman Callum Hawkins crumpled in a mess of physical distress, two and a bit k's from home. Robbie Simpson will complete the dais in the men's marathon. Gold to Australia, silver to Uganda, bronze to Scotland. And admittedly, while we're focusing in on the finish here, I can't give you any further news on Callum Hawkins. Let's hope he's OK. But we'll endeavour to get some information for you now that we do have our medalists and we have a chance to perhaps catch our breath here. And hopefully that young man is OK in scenes that no one wants to see. And, and now, in fact, here at the finish line, we're getting vision of Hawkins being placed into the back of an ambulance. He's on the gurney and being pushed into the back of an ambulance. Looks conscious from what I could tell. There are so many emergency services personnel around there to help him. It was always going to be the case that he would be given every opportunity to try and continue. And once he couldn't get to the finish line, the, the best possible help would be there for him. So Hawkins, having led at the 40k point, collapsed only metres there beyond, is now going to be driven from the course in an ambulance. As here at the finish line, we can see the next of the Australians. There are only two Australians in the men's marathon, and Liam Adams is about to come to the finish line in fifth position. He looks absolutely stuffed. He's just getting his legs in front of each other. But he's going to complete the course, and it's a top five finish for him. Adams gets through the finish line, stops his wristwatch, and wavers a little to the left and then gets held up and helped by an attendant who puts a towel around his back, gives him a drink of water, and he looks okay. He looks okay. He's taking in some refreshment. Two hours, 21 minutes and eight seconds. The time for Liam Adams in fifth. And now Michael Shelley, who was at a different part of the, part of the course, runs back down to, to try and greet up with his, his fellow marathon runner. Wow. What a Sunday on the streets of the Gold Coast. Firstly, the pure emotion of Kurt Fernley. Then the joy of Matty Di Rosario. Then the wonderful joy for Namibia with their flag bearer Helilia Johannes winning the women's marathon and silver and bronze going to Australia there. And then Michael Shelley takes the gold in circumstances which have got us all a little gobsmacked, really. Callum Hawkins, anyone who has seen it will never forget it. Wavering left, wavering right, once falling to the curb, twice falling to the curb, and then on the third time, he could not get up. He was out for the count and could not complete the course. <laughs> With that, I'll take a breath from Southport and take you back inside the basketball stadium because the men's bronze medal game featuring Scotland is taking place. They're up against New Zealand for the latest Corbin Middlemass.